excited to hear the word? Amen. Amen. Do you remember what I spoke last time? Do you remember, Dorothy? <laughs> 16 steps to achieving uh, your promises from God, to receiving your promises from God. So this will be a sort of continuation. Of course, it's a totally different subject. I would like to talk about doubt and unbelief that will rob you of God's blessings. Doubt and unbelief that will block or rob you of God's blessings. That's what I would like to talk today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come before your holy throne in, with great expectancy, Father. Lord, this evening we want, to talk, you, we want you to talk to us, O oh Lord. We want you to show us what's robbing our blessings, O oh Lord. And we want you to speak to us, O oh Lord. I just pray that our minds will be alert, Father. Our hearts will be receptive, Father God, to receiving your word, Father God. Every disturbances, every disturbing spirit, we bind you and we render you powerless in the name of Jesus. And every plots, plans, assignments of the enemy against to this meeting, we cancel it in Jesus' name and we bind those forces. Lord, let your spirit be released, Lord. Let your anointing flow, Lord. Touch hearts, Lord. Change lives this evening, Father God. Lord, we, I just pray that you would use me, Father God. You will just speak through me, Lord. Let your thoughts be revealed this evening, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Unbelief and doubt that robs you of God's blessings. How many of you know that God wants us blessed? We sang a song which says, God wants us free. God wants us free. God wants us to be blessed. Maybe religion has taught us that God doesn't want us to be blessed. But nowadays everybody knows that the truth has been revealed. Most of the Christians know that God wants us blessed. He wants us to be blessed in every area. He wants us to be free in every area. It is his idea that we should walk in health. It is his idea that we should walk in prosperity. It is his idea that we walk in freedom. It was God's idea that the children of Israel go to a land flowing with milk and honey. It was nobody else's idea. They didn't even know that there a land flowing with milk and honey existed. It was God's idea that they go to a land flowing with milk and honey and enjoy such a, such a wonderful place. It was God's idea. It's God's idea that um, we, we walk in prosperity and blessings. There are 33,000 promises in this Bible and God wants us to claim each and every one of them. Each and every promise in this word of God, if you will claim it, it will take place in your life. If you will believe it, God will give it to you. God didn't keep these promises so that, I mean, just so that the book will be so big. No, God put these promises so that his children can claim it and receive it. Any promise you ask for, he will give it to you. So everything you want is, is here. But then the reason why most of us are robbed of God's blessings is because of doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief like, are, are like twins. It's almost the same. It's because of doubt and unbelief that most of us are not walking in that truth. The thing is, um, most of us in this church, we know that, that God wants us to be blessed and these promises belong to us. But then the reason why we are not walking in it is because... Uh, of doubt and unbelief. Actually, if you look at heaven, God wants heaven, us to have heaven on earth. Heaven has no sickness. Heaven has no poverty. Heaven has no turmoil and disturbances. Heaven has no tension. Heaven has healing. Heaven has prosperity. And God wants us to have heaven on earth. And if you want uh, heaven on earth, you have to think like God. You have to believe God's word. If you want healing on, on this earth, you have to think healing. If you want a prosperity, you have to think prosperity. If you, if you want peace, you have to think peace. You have to think like God. If you want to think like God, the word of God helps you to think like God. But the reason why we are not able to think like God is because of doubts. The devil keeps on injecting these thoughts. No, it's not going to happen. And so we keep doubting. And it robs us of God's blessings. And uh, so... We should have faith to receive these blessings. What is faith? Faith is believing God's promises. Faith is believing God's promises. So if you don't have faith, you cannot receive all these blessings. And doubt and unbelief is what robs you of these blessings. Let's turn to Mark chapter 11 verse 23. Mark chapter 11 verse 23. 22 says, have faith in God. 
Jesus is saying, have faith in God. Actually, the Greek translation says, says have the faith of God. God, does, God will not tell you to have anything which he, he hasn't given you. He, has, he tells you to, uh, to have something which he has already given you. If he hasn't given to you, he is not going to tell you to have it. You have faith. When you got born again, a measure of faith has been deposited in your heart and you can develop it. So it says, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that he, those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Did you notice in the middle of this scripture, it says, if he does not doubt in his heart. It's in the middle of the scripture. So if you want anything from God, if you do not doubt, you will have it. So the next scripture says, therefore, I say to you, whatever things, what a beautiful scripture, whatever things you ask God, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. Whatever things. But then it depends on whether you doubt or not. If you do not doubt, um, I request you all to be uh, attentive and not to look at the children and be distracted. Just be attentive because you will miss God. If God is speaking to you, sometimes you may have a problem and if God is speaking to you, you will miss God because God speaks from this pulpit. Whoever stands in this pulpit, God will speak. So if you get the devil's trick, trick is to distract you so that you miss God for that problem of yours, then he will help you to, he'll make you focus. But you will miss that point. So here it says that if you do not doubt, whatever things you ask, believing you will receive. But if you don't doubt. So doubt is what the, this scripture hinges on um, verse 23 and 24. This uh, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. It depends on verse 23. So only one thing can stop you from having this faith. That is doubt. I would like you to turn to Matthew chapter 14 verse 25 to 31. Okay, it's talking about Peter walking on water. Okay, can I read it? Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, it is you. if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when, the, when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So here's the story of the disciples. Jesus had sent them on the boat and they were on, in the middle of the sea. You, in, in the middle of the sea, the boat was, boat was to, uh, tossed and turned because of the wind. Wind, wind was boisterous, means contrary. It was opposite. It com was coming in the opposite direction. At that time, Jesus went walking on the water. So, suppose you were in the boat, and if you saw Jesus walking on the water, would you be scared? Definitely. Because ordinarily, nobody walks on the water. But when suddenly a human being walks on water, then suddenly, and it's night, and it's windy, you'll be scared. So, the, the disciples started crying out, Oh my God, it's a ghost. And then Jesus said, No, don't be afraid, it's, it's me. And then they were, they were pacified. At that time, Peter said, Lord, if it's you... Say the word come and then I will come. Because Peter knew the value of Jesus' word. Jesus said his words are spirit and life. And God, when he spoke, things happened. So uh, Peter knew that when Jesus would speak it, it would be easy for him to uh, walk. So, so Peter said, if it is you, just say the word come and I will come. And Jesus said come. And then he stepped out of the boat and he started walking on water. He walked on water. Actually, the greatest miracle on the earth took place. Peter walked on the water. At the word of Jesus, he obeyed the word, he acted upon the word of Jesus and he walked on water. But what happened? 
suddenly his focus was ta- taken off of Jesus and he started looking at the wind the wind was boisterous when he saw the wind he got afraid and he started sinking and then Jesus reached out that means he re- walked almost towards Jesus reached out his hand and pulled him and Jesus didn't appreciate him oh peter at least you walked at least two steps that's great none of the other disciples did, did that we would have said oh given him a pat on his back and said peter at least you have walked two steps great great that's great faith jesus didn't say that jesus rebuked him and said why did you be afraid why were you afraid why did you doubt in fact jesus was saying if you hadn't doubted you would have walked on water and actually peter was entering into the supernatural which god had for him but then it was not completed many times many of us enter into the supernatural a miracle working or starts operating in our life but what happens is that it doesn't get completed because doubt robs us and peter was robbed of the greatest blessing the god's desire was peter to walk on the water perhaps because of that many of us would have walked on water but peter doubted because of doubt he started sinking if he hadn't looked at the wind first of all the wind didn't have anything to do with him being afraid because when he stepped out of the boat the wind was still there so why did he be afraid of the wind he didn't have to be afraid when he walked two steps the wind was still there the condition was the same but when his focus was on the wind then he started sinking this is what happens to us many times we step out believing for great things we step out believing for healing or financial breakthrough or for the greatest job you know that desire is always put by god good things good desires are put by god but what happens is when we see the circumstances the economic situation or the situation in our offices or the doctor's report what happens we start doubting and what happens the we miss out on the greatest miracle i have missed out on so many miracles but i have seen so many miracles too because doubt has robbed us of so many miracles that is why we have to understand how doubt works so that we will be able to overcome it otherwise we will not be able to see these promises it's god's desire that every one of us see all the promises in the bible um i remember in one of the messages which i heard there was a story of a lady who went to oral roberts meeting and this lady was stone deaf she couldn't hear anything and when she went to oral roberts uh, meeting in dallas in 1948 god instantly healed her and she was healed and she went home and she was healed and she was completely fine for months and months and suddenly at times she suddenly loses her hearing then it comes back then suddenly she loses her hearing then it comes back then what happened was her sisters came for christmas dinner and then she told them like i keep losing my hearing sometimes they said oh we are really a af- ruby her name is ruby we are really afraid that you are going to lose your he- he- hearing and she believed it within a few hours she lost lost all the hearing she couldn't hear anymore she lost that miracle it depends also on the people you are with sometimes you may receive a greatest miracle and you go to your unbelieving family or people unbelieving friends and then they make you your your friends matter a lot because they can affect you what happened to jesus when jesus went, went to his hometown in matthew the previous chapter matthew chapter 13 verse 57 he went to nazareth his hometown and then when he went to his hometown people came to meet him but they found that he he was uh, um uh, the carp- joseph the carpenter's son so they got offended so you know what what does the bible say here in verse 58 now he did not do many mighty miracles why because of their unbelief he did not do many mighty miracles why because of their unbelief if you look at mark chapter 6 verse 5 same same story is said there now he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief then he went about the villages so he's in verse 5 it says he could not do it doesn't say he did not do he could not do if you take the greek translation it says he tried to but could not can you imagine the son of the living god 
the most anointed savior who is anointed to set the captives free he said the spirit of the lord is upon me he has anointed me to set the captives free to heal the broken hearted he tried to but he could not do mighty miracles why because of their unbelief so he could only do except a few minor ailments in greek that minor means small ailments like headache flu he and few people were healed he could not do mighty miracles why because of their unbelief and because of their unbelief this city of nazareth this town was robbed of god's greatest blessings the lepers were robbed of their healing the blind were robbed of their sight and many people the crippled were robbed of their uh, deliverance many people were robbed of of all this so um so look look can you see that can you see that what unbelief could do unbelief couldn't even make jesus do anything jesus couldn't do anything then can you imagine what we could do so unbelief is that dangerous is the greatest enemy of christians because it will rob you of all god's blessings and this is what the devil peddles and brings to your mind he could not do any miracles he tried to but could not and that nation was missing on god's blessing you know nations will be robbed of god's blessing if they walk in unbelief and it will affect other people for example the children of israel when they were crossing uh, they were they were supposed to go to the promised land when they reach kadesh barnia a place called kadesh barnia when they came there they sent 12 spies to spy the land and 10 of them brought bad reports but caleb and joshua they believed that they could take the land but because of the 10 people who brought, brought bad report and because of the other other people the nation joshua and caleb could not enter they had to wait 40 more years to enter even though they believed so the unbelief of your church or your nation or your family really affects you or who you hang around with if you hang around with unbelievers or believing believers but unbelieving believers it will affect you because see how nations were robbed of god's blessings so peter when he took his eyes of jesus he 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 was he started thinking we should when we are believing god for something focus on the word of god just keep on focusing don't focus on the circumstance if you are believing for financial breakthrough or if you are believing for a great job or if you are believing for college admission or whatever you want just focus on the word of god because outside forces will tell you that you cannot have it you cannot have it but you just keep focusing on jesus as long as peter focused on jesus he was able to walk on water the greatest miracle no one had done is supernatural he was able to walk on supernatural but the moment he took his eyes off jesus he started sinking it was a it was good that jesus reached out his hand and pulled him out but most of the time they sink god just allows them to sink and come to heaven early i remember um, arun's aunt she when she was diagnosed with cancer i i called her i said see let's 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 plan things you you've been diagnosed with cancer third stage let's do one thing this these are the things open your bible take the scriptures go to the concordance find the healing scriptures listen to the word don't focus on the uh, doctor's report just keep focusing on the word of god keep confessing it and meditate on it see yourself being healed i sent her tapes and tapes and books i sent her lots of books and then she started doing that and then i start asked her what's your routine what do you do because there's no time then she said i uh, i wake up in the morning i sing and sing i said singing is not enough you need to worship god that is the most important thing but you have to listen to the word of god keep focusing on that see yourself she started doing that and doing that and in a year's time all cancer was removed from her body completely no trace of cancer and she was free and then her hair started growing and then her her, uh, her daughter to another child uh, to a child and then slowly her focus changed and then the cancer came back again at this time she started doubting and what happened is she she started doubting she couldn't focus on the word of god and cancer took her life cancer took her life another another lady i will tell you norval hayes was talking about this lady her name is jerry she got healed from cancer 
in a miracle service and every time from the time she got healed the devil was going on telling her you're having cancer he's trying to put it but she resisted it resisted it resisted it but one day she could not resist it anymore it was all over her body and she called uh, normal hay uh, saying that i'm just i i feel that cancer coming back but i want to resist it but i can't do it can you come so he said i'm coming he came they locked the living room and they started worshiping god and they started worshiping god and they started claiming and rebuking the devil resisting it and after a while all the symptoms left and she's still alive see satan can bring back the symptoms that's how doubt comes he can bring back the same situation back to you that's how doubt and unbelief comes but if you would keep focusing on the word the word will never fail jesus said that uh, sam says that forever your word has been settled in the heavens and god said he will not alter his co- covenant uh, uh, his word and uh, not not even a single uh, dot or whatever will not be changed from the word of god heaven and earth may pass away but my word will not pass away you can depend on the living word of god like you would depend on your life on god i mean you can you cannot even live, depend on your life so it's so very important that we we do not doubt if you are believing for something many of us have many issues in life maybe you want a job maybe you want to get married or maybe you have family issues or maybe you want a child or uh, maybe you are looking for a, a promotion it doesn't matter what it is god has promises god wants you to be free god wants you to get the best at that time what do you do like 16 steps we were discussing last time what do you do you find the promise pertaining to your situation you take it and you meditate on it and you believe and keep thanking god you believe and keep thanking god you believe and keep thanking god refuse to look at the circumstances regardless of how long it is taking keep thanking god keep thanking god confessing it will take place i i remember in one of the messages brother hagen was saying that he used to go to fort worth to minister to one uh, one preacher and then whenever he went there uh that man did know much truth so he uh, he had been ministering for the past 40 years this man was a pastor for the past 40 years it was recently only when brother hagen was preaching on healing that he heard about healing so he believed for his diabetes which was for the past 39 years he has been having diabetes and then you everybody knows even doctors will tell you that if you have had diabetes for the past 39 years your pancreas is almost dead but he started I, he would inject himself and say i believe i receive my healing in the name of jesus thank you lord for healing me from diabetes you bore my sickness you carried my disease by your stripes i am healed and he would inject himself with insulin every day he would thank god he, every day he would thank god he would always keep thanking god and praising he wouldn't look at the reports he, he would just keep on injecting himself and one day as he was driving there was a fly that came into his car so he was trying to uh, you know uh, get this fly out of his car and he hit a tree then he was taken to the hospital nothing happened to him they they checked him checked him completely and the doctor said are you taking insulin he said yeah please stop that don't you don't need insulin and he stopped that this is how the word works it's so easy but the devil will not make it easy he will start bringing all kinds of circums contrary circumstances and he will make you uh, think about the economy and uh, things happening around the loss of the land you know faith is the higher law there is nothing above faith if you are standing in faith all the laws will have to submit to faith so that is why it is so important uh, that you not allow unbelief or doubt in your mind many people will say like when things happen like when arun's aunt passed away they said oh god is sovereign he just took her at the age of 55 i mean that is not right you are putting all the responsibility on god you just don't want to take any responsibility that's not right god wants us to live long it's god's will that we live long it's because he, she we i know the case because she turned her eyes off jesus she turned her eyes off the word when she focused on the on her eyes on the word of god she was completely healed third stage cancer doctor gave her a report that no trace of cancer but the devil will try to keep on putting it so so we cannot uh, blame god for for that now if you look at matthew chapter 17 verse 15 to 20 um 
this is about the when jesus took his three disciples to the mount of transfiguration and the rest of the disciples were uh, at the foot of the mountain and when jesus came from the mount of transfiguration he found a man who had a son who had epileptic seizures and the man came running to jesus and said master can you heal my son because your disciples couldn't do it so the, the moment jesus heard that his disciples couldn't do it this is what jesus said he said o oh, faithless and perverse generation how sh- long shall i put up with you how long shall i bear with you bring him here to me so after that boy was brought he was healed on the way these disciples asked jesus why couldn't we cast out the devil why couldn't we why did they ask that because they were already casting out demons otherwise they wouldn't ask if they were not casting out demons they wouldn't ask this question in mark chap- uh, matthew chapter 10 jesus had uh, given all authority to the uh, disciples and blessed them and given them authority to cast out demons in matthew chapter 10 from then on they've been casting out demons that is why they asked jesus why couldn't we do this this one and jesus said because of verse 20 he says because of your unbelief for I sh- assuredly i say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and it will move nothing will be impossible for you because of their unbelief so the disciples who followers of jesus and the ones who walked with jesus heard jesus saw jesus casting out demons they were robbed of god's blessings in their ministry walk because of doubt and unbelief then imagine us how how careful we have to be so it is very important that we shouldn't let doubt and unbelief the thief the thief from robbing us from of god's blessings um i, I remember uh, one uh, story with brother hagen was saying he was saying even joseph prince was the other day saying about this he was saying that one day uh, jesus visited brother hagen brother hagen had maybe about 54 or uh, i don't know more than that visitation from jesus see you should know that in those days in the 1940s and 1950s nobody knew about faith nobody thought about faith nobody knew the word of god like they they know today so jesus had to visit uh Kenneth Hagin and teach him a few things and once he had a visitation from Jesus and he said I'm going to give you a special anointing for healing so when you place your hand on one side of the person and the other hand on the other side of the person if the fire of god goes from this hand to the other hand that means there is a demon that's not a sickness but it's a demon you have to cast it out but if the fire doesn't go anywhere but it stays in your hand that means it's a sickness so you just pray the prayer of uh, healing and that person will be healed so he knew this and he started doing it whenever he p- prayed for somebody he'll put one hand on this shoulder and the other hand on that shoulder and when the fire of god jumps from this hand to the other he could feel it then he knew that it was a demon so he would command the demon to come out of him so one of these meetings there was a, a ma- man with spinal tb that's what they said his uh back was stiff as a board he couldn't bend or do anything just stiff as a board and he came to uh brother hagen and he 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 said like my back is stiff as a board he's just 20 years old and he brother hagen prayed he put his hands and then fire was jumping from this hand to the other which meant that that was a demon so he told that man in the name of jesus i command this demon to come out in the name of jesus and then he told that man okay now see if he used the word if you know our words are very important he said if you can stoop and touch your toes but that man couldn't so again brother hagen put his hands again fire was going from this hand to the other so he said in the name of jesus come out of him and then he said now see if you can stoop down and touch your toes he couldn't third time he did again come out of him in the name of jesus now see if you can stoop down he couldn't so normally after three tries you know you don't stay with a person so he just stepped out and moved to the pulpit area and he was bending his head the next person came but he was ignoring that person he was bending his head and he was thinking what do what happened i mean why didn't that go so when he lifted his head up suddenly jesus stood in front of him he could see him as plainly i can uh, as i could, i can see you and he pointed his finger almost touching his nose at, at brother hagen and he said i said in my name the demons will go out and he said yes lord i know that i did it but i said i cast them out in your name but they didn't again he pointed his finger i said in my name when you cast them out they will go he said 
yes lord i know that i did it but they didn't go then again he pointed his finger this time his eyes was like lightning flashing out of his eyes and uh, brother hagen said i knew exactly how jesus looked when he dro- drove the money changers with a whip from the temple exactly how he looked because that is how he was like stern like his voice was a little angry or uh, you know curt you can say he said no lord i i i, I know they would but they didn't he didn't yes but i said they would he uh, shouted and said i said they would and he disappeared suddenly he got it and he called that man again so whatever conversation brother hagen said the church could hear but they couldn't see jesus and he called that man again and he said uh you you evil spirit in the name of jesus you have to go and i command you to go in the name of jesus then he said now stoop down and touch your toes and he was able to touch his toes he said he would have been robbed of god's blessing if he hadn't um if jesus hadn't intervened and that man would have been robbed of god's healing the thing is we are responsible when god has called us as ministers we are responsible also for the healing of other people if our faith doesn't work it doesn't work for the people too and uh, brother hagen was saying that you know jesus had to point it out to him many people are robbed from god's blessing this way because we don't see it we we doubt so the, so that is why it is very very important that we should we should believe we should not doubt our words are so important do you have you noticed jesus is irritated at unbelief he gets angry at unbelief he has always rebuked unbelief and doubt in in the bible whenever anybody has had unbelief or doubt he rebuked them because he is against unbelief i remember reading a book called um what is the name of the book rebecca robert yarden uh, on heaven i saw heaven yeah the book name is i saw heaven in that book robert yarden had a visitation to heaven at the age of 8 and jesus was crying and was saying my people don't believe me i told them many things in my word but they don't believe me don't i do what i tell them that what i told them i'll do why don't they believe me and he was crying it irritates god god is not pleased with people who have unbelief and doubt that's why the bible says without faith you cannot please god that is why we are not able to do greater works than Je- jesus jesus said greater works than these uh, will you be able to do once i go to heaven because the comforter will be with you why the reason why we are not able to do greater works is because of doubt and unbelief so it is important that we we find out we we uh, identify doubt and unbelief and get it out of our lives and you have to resist doubt and unbelief when you are standing in faith for something surely doubt and unbelief will come to rob you of god's blessing you have to resist it you have to just say no no god's word says this no i was just imagining i was meditating on that scripture where peter was walking on the water today and i was thinking what if jesus uh, peter stepped out of, of, of the water he is walking and he, if i if it was me since i know this truth i would have done it this way jesus said come so i can walk jesus said come i can walk and i would just say jesus said come i would have confessed it and i said oh that's the reason why we should confess jesus said come okay and i'll take another step yes jesus said come his word is spirit and life his word will never return to him void yes and i would have reached there so the thing is like you know if you focus <laughs> if you focus your eyes on jesus you will be able to do that on the word of god jesus means the word of god uh, john chapter 1 says god jesus has been made unto he is the word right what does it say jesus has been made flesh right the word has been made flesh yeah so jesus is the word and in revelation it says his name is word of god when you focus on the, the word some people say you know what when you talk about the word 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 you are just taking their eyes of jesus that's wrong there is no word without jesus there is no jesus without the word the word and jesus are the same just like our word and us we are same see if i say a word and if i don't um if i don't go by by my word i may be uh, they will call me a bad person if i am a person who keeps my word 
they call me a good person because she's a woman of her word. The thing is, our word cannot be separated from us. Same way with Jesus. So that is why, I mean, how many of us want to walk on water? I'm not talking about walking, literally walking on the sea. I'm talking about impossible situations. Don't you want to walk? Jesus wants you to walk. He will back you up. Peter just said, bid me come. And he said, come. He was backing him up. But then, you know, the only thing that can rob us is doubt and unbelief. You know, when I was believing God to go to U.S. Uh, last vacation, vacation, I decided almost I gave up. I was thinking, oh, it's okay. Let's, we can go to India or some other place. And Arun had said, we'll go later on to North Carolina or some place. Let's, I just wanted to give up. But I thought, like, if I give up, Jesus will not be pleased. That's why I didn't give up. So the thing is, uh, we should not give up. We should focus on the word of God. And if you look at the centurion, see, when Jesus went to Nazareth, Nazareth, to his own hometown, the Bible says he marveled at their unbelief. He was shocked, marveled. How could anybody have such unbelief? But when the centurion, who was not even a person with a covenant with God, came and said, Lord, I am also a, a, a master. I tell the servant to go and he goes. And the servant come, uh, he comes. So you don't even have to come to my house. You only have to speak the word and my servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled at his great faith. And he commended it. He, he appreciated it. But great faith will take you full way. And you will be able to see the full result. So um, I just wanted to talk to you about uh, how faith works. Because if you do not doubt, you can see the most impossible situation happening. Uh, I will tell you about Brother Hagen. At the age of 17, 18, age of Nihal, he was bedridden with an incurable heart disease and a blood disease. He was bedridden. Every day, they would be making plans for his funeral. I heard the whole story. I was shocked. And he was saying that, he said, I have not give, given full details of the story. But I want to tell you, this is how faith works. I was really encouraged by that story. He said, every day they would, they would talk about my funeral. And my mother came and said, son, for your funeral, what song do you want us to sing? Then he said, will this song be enough? Then he said, yeah, it will be OK. After all, I won't be there to listen to it. Then whom do you want to pre can you? He said, can you? they were really encouraging. That's what he said. Can you imagine coming and talking to him? Son, whom do you want to preach? Do you want that reverend to preach or this reverend? Oh, it doesn't matter who, but after all, I won't be there. Then he, he said, okay, uh, where do you want to be buried? Uh, do you want us to bury with a family site or wherever? He said, I, I guess that will not be a problem because after all, like, I'm not going to see it. So these are the things he was hearing and the doctors would say, just be patient, son, just a little while and you'll be free. And then he would just... Think, imagine talking to him and he is a young boy and, he was, and then he would look through the window and he will see the winter and the summer coming by. He will just see all this through the window and he will just see his grave and then he will see during the winter all the leaves falling on his grave and somebody sweeping it off and then he will see winter and all the snow coming on his grave and somebody uh, clearing the snow from his grave. He would just see his death day and night. And that's when he found Mark chapter 11, verse 23. He took it. He said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have them. You shall have whatever you say. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says, he shall have whatever he says. I can't believe this. Is this true? So he said, can you call the pastor, our Baptist, he's, he was Baptist, Southern Baptist. Can you call the pastor? I want to ask him a question. So the mother went all the way, walking two miles, and went to the pastor and said, so I will come, but I'm a little busy, but next week I'll come. But he never turned up. And then, then the grandmother said, I know this reverend. He's a very good man. I will call him. So grandmother went and called. He never came. Brother Hagen was saying he cried and cried and cried that night because nobody was there to explain the scripture to him. But he was saying, later on he, dis he thanked God they didn't come because they would have taken, put unbelief in him. Then finally Dr. W came, another reverend. And he uh, said, uh, he couldn't talk. Oh my, he was just talking. 
he was talking like that because he was like paralyzed his tongues were not working he couldn't talk then the doctor w said you'll be all right you'll be all right okay and then uh, outside he could hear it clearly the devil even made it very clear to him he he could hear hear it clearly saying it's a matter of few days he'll be gone to be with the lord and they he went he he just threw this bible and said and he was so angry and he was so sad and he cried and he just every night he would see his funeral every night. he scared he was scared to close his eyes can you imagine if you have a death sentence on you you are scared to close your eyes because you are afraid you will not wake up and then one day he decided bring back that bible can you prop it up on my bed his parents could understand his language turn it to mark 11 23 and 24 and he kept reading and reading and he reading and he said god if this word doesn't work i'm going to throw it into the trash this is your word jesus said it and i'm going to believe it exactly like it says nobody is here to explain it to me but if this doesn't work i'm going to throw the bible into the trash and i'm going to say that the bible doesn't work it is a lie so he decided whatsoever you desire when you pray believe that you receive and you shall have them when do you believe that you receive when you pray not after you get healed right so he prayed i have prayed now so i believe i receive my healing wellness in my body so this is what i am going to do i am uh, what am i going to do if i am well age of 18 nihal sage 17 18 um oh i am going to preach so he started writing notes preaching notes preaching notes preaching notes which he has never preached but he kept on writing and one day he was thinking that i am already well because whatsoever you desire when you pray believe that you receive it you shall have them so if i am well why should i lie down a well person doesn't lie down so i have to get up he is paralyzed he took all the force and tried to move his toe and when he tried to move his toe the power of god came and made uh, brought uh, the strength to his body and he could jump up and he stood up and then normally every day they would have breakfast he lived with his grandparents too exactly at 7:30 you can you can even change the time of your clock depending on how his grandfather went to the dining table to have breakfast exactly at 7:30 he dressed up and he sat on that empty chair that was his and he said oh the grandfather said the dead rise lazarus is a, a rise this is all they said i mean we would have just jumped and i was saying they, this is how they are so you know uh, so uh, Uh, i mean rule minded that they they feel they are at the breakfast table so they have to take get breakfast they ate that and he was saying that after uh, being bedridden for several years you will be so tired he was so weak so he decided that he will take a nap and then he will go out to the town he will sit with grandfather for a while so he went to take a nap and he was taking a nap at 8 o'clock he woke up and he heard this word i um, i don't know how to quote it but it's in psalm 103 your life is just a vapor and it will be taken in a few minutes you saw this miracle so that it will be taken for a few minutes he thought god was talking to him so he understood that he is going to die he got out of the bed tiptoeing because he thought that he heard god speaking and he went and sat on the chair near the window waiting to die and then the cooking in the kitchen the smell of the food made him sick because when you're waiting to die you're fearful you feel so sick you feel uh, like vomiting and he was oh so this miracle was for me to die and from then deep from down within he heard a small still voice saying that i will satisfy you with a long life in fact he said loudly who said that because uh, that's how he heard it then again your life is just a vapor it is just for a moment and today the gra- like a grass it will die today the grass will be tomorrow it will be da- da- it will die then he said no 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 god is that you who said this you will satisfy me with a long life where is it then he heard an- another still small voice psalms 91 can you imagine the miracle god gave the devil was stealing it from him, trying to steal from him he did not en- he did not know anything through doubt and unbelief he did not know anything he believed every word he heard was from god and then but he was careful and then he heard this voice he was, imagine he was almost six hours sitting there he was not eating anything and then he heard this it's sam's 91 he quick